In the last couple of lectures, we understood the concept of event-driven architecture in Node.js. Now in this lecture, let's talk about another important concept in Node.js, which is streams. So let's understand streams and let's understand what is the advantage it provides. Let's first take a simple example to understand what is not a stream. Let's say we want to read a file. For that, we are going to use this read file method and we want to read the source file.txt. Now, when we use read file method to read a file, in between a buffer is created. From the source file, the content is read in the read buffer and all the content is read at once. And then that read content is available in our Node.js application. So here we are storing that content in the data variable. Now we want to write the data, the content which we have in the data variable in another file. For that, we need to use this write file method, right? We have already seen this. So here we want to write the data, the content which we have in this data variable to let's say a destination file. And to do that, when we use write file method, it creates a write buffer in between. And then it writes all the data in that buffer and from that buffer the data is written to the destination file and again all these happens at once the write file method writes all the data in the buffer at once and then that data is written in the destination file so this is how the normal read and write works when we read a file using read file method when the read file completes reading all the content from the specified file that data will be stored in the memory and then it will be available for use. If the file is very large, it is still going to read all the data from the file before it makes it available for use. And it might take some time in reading all the content from that file as the file is very large. Once all the content from that large file is read, then only that content will be available for use. That content will be stored in the system's memory and it will be available for use. The problem here is that since we are reading a large file, and once that large file is completely read, we are going to store all that data in the system's memory. So it is going to take a lot of memory to store that data. Now with streams, we can process, that is we can read and write data piece by piece instead of reading or writing the whole data at once. Therefore, we don't have to keep all the data in the memory to do these operations. For example, let's say we want to read a file and this time we are going to make use of read stream. So this read stream is going to read the content of the source file. To do that, again, a read buffer will be created where the content will be written first. You can think of this read buffer as the memory in your system where the content which we are reading from the source file that will be stored. But since we are using stream here, in between the source file and the read buffer, there will be a stream which will get created. And using this stream, instead of reading all the content at once, we can read the contents piece by piece, chunk by chunk. And in this way, we are not storing all the data in the memory. We are reading a chunk, we are storing it in the memory and we are using it. And then we are freeing the memory. Then we are reading another chunk, we are storing it in the memory, we are using it and then we are freeing the memory. And this process is repeated until the entire file has been processed. And this is what stream is. Think of YouTube or Netflix, which are both called as streaming companies because they stream videos using the same principle. So here, instead of waiting until the entire video file loads, the processing is done piece by piece. Or we can also say that video is processed in chunks so that you can start watching videos even before the entire file has been downloaded. And this principle does not apply only to Node.js, but it is common in computer science in general. And this makes stream the perfect candidate for handling large volume of data. For example, streaming live videos, live matches, or when creating a streaming app. And also for the data that we are receiving piece by piece from an external source. So the advantage of using streaming is that streaming makes the data processing more efficient in terms of memory, because there is no need to keep all the data in the memory. In terms of performance and time also, streaming has its advantage because we can start processing the data as soon as the first chunk of data arrives. Okay, so now that we know what streams are, let's talk a bit about how they are implemented in Node.js. So in Node.js, there are four types of streams, readable streams, writable streams, 
duplex streams and transform streams. Here, the readable and writable streams are the most important and common ones. And so, we are going to focus more on these two. We will also talk about duplex stream and transform stream on a high level and understand what we use it for. The readable streams are the one from where we can read or consume data. For example, when we send a request to the node server, the request data which we receive on the server, we receive it through readable stream. So when we send a request to the server, a readable stream is opened. And through that readable stream, we get the request data in chunks. That means the request data which comes on the server, it comes in piece by piece and not the complete data at once. Another example of readable stream would be from the file system. We can read a file piece by piece by using the create read stream from the FS module, which can actually be quite useful for reading large text files. Another important thing to note here is that streams are actually instances of event emitter class. That means all types of streams can emit and listen to named events. And we will understand this practically in our next lecture. In case of readable streams, we can emit and we can listen to many events, but the most important two events of readable stream are the data and the end event. The data event is emitted when there is a new piece or new chunk of data to consume. For example, when we are reading a file using read stream, the data will be read in chunks. So whenever a new chunk of data is read and available to use, the data event will be emitted. And the end event is emitted as soon as there is no more data to consume. For example, let's say we are reading data chunk by chunk from a file. Once all the chunk of data is received and there is no more chunk of data available, the end event will be raised. And of course, when these event happens, we can react to these events accordingly. We will understand this practically in the next lecture. Beside events, we also have important functions that we can use on a stream. And in case of readable stream, the most important functions are the pipe and read functions. In simple words, the read function can be called when we want to read each chunk from the readable stream one after the other and the pipe function allows us to plug streams together passing data from one stream to another without having to worry much about the events at all for example we can read data from a readable stream and we can write it to the writable stream simultaneously using the pipe method we will learn more about pipe method in our next lecture now let's talk about writable stream so Writable streams are the ones to which we can write data. It is basically the opposite of readable stream. A great example of writable stream will be the HTTP response that we can send back to the client and which is actually a writable stream that is the stream that we can write data into. So basically when we want to send data we want to write it somewhere right and that something or that somewhere is the writable stream. For example if we want to send a big video file to the client we would stream the result just like Netflix or YouTube do instead of sending the complete video file at once. The two important events of writable stream are the drain and finish event. The drain event is raised when the writable streams internal buffer has been emptied. And the finish event in a writable stream is emitted after calling of the end method when all the data is being flushed to the hidden system. Basically, it's similar to end event in readable stream. And finally, the most important functions which we have on writable stream is the write and end function. And we will understand it practically in our next lecture. So these are the two main streams in Node.js, the readable stream and the writable stream. Now let's talk about duplex stream a bit. So duplex stream is simply a stream that is both readable and writable at the same time. This stream is a combination of readable and writable stream. These type of streams are a bit less common and a good example of duplex stream would be the WebSocket from the net module. A WebSocket is basically a communication channel between client and the server, which works in both the direction and it stays open once the connection has been established. A simple example where WebSockets are used is in the real-time chat apps. Finally, the transform streams are the duplex streams, that is the streams that are both readable and writable and at the same time it can modify or transform the data as it is read or written. A good example of this one is the Zlib Co module to compress data which actually uses a transform stream. Alright, so these are the four types of streams and a broad overview of how we can use them. We can also implement our own streams and then consume them and I will cover how to do that in one of the lectures of this course. 
But for the most part of the application development with Node.js, we don't need to worry about implementing our own streams. The readable and writable stream should be enough. So this is all from this lecture. In the next lecture, let's understand streams with practical examples.